Hello, so in this video, we're going to be working through question two here, and I'm going to be showing you how to use your CAS to answer these questions. You could do this by hand, but I'm just going to use the CAS for it. It says the velocity of a particle v meters a second at time t seconds, where t is greater than or equal to zero, is given by v is equal to three t squared minus eight t plus five. It is initially four meters to the right of a point zero, O origin. Find its position and acceleration at any time. Okay, so let's just lay out what we've been given here. I have been given the equation for the velocity, three t squared minus eight t plus five. What I need to find, what this question is telling me is I need to find the position equation. So that's the one up here. That's the one like, I like to think, think of this, x of t. And it's also asking me to find my acceleration. And that's going to be the one down here. So it's going to be acceleration of t. Now, how are we going to find these? Let me just move this over here for a second. What you need to know is that to go from velocity to the position, I have to anti-diff. And to go from velocity to acceleration, I just diff. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to be doing this on my CAS calculator just to do it a bit quicker. Uh, but you should be able to do this by hand. I might do it by hand as well, um, but we'll see how we go. Let's just do it with the CAS first. Let's come here and let's begin just by defining what my velocity is. That will save us some time. So I'm going to go um, V of T, control this, because I'm going to define it. Three of T squared minus eight T plus five. It's going to be that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define what my uh, position equation will be. So I'm going to go, what is x of t? I'm going to define this like that. Now I know that to go from velocity to position, I'm going to have to anti-differentiate. So I go shift plus to do that quickly. Now it does give me um, these limits here, these upper and lower boundaries, but we're just going to ignore them. We don't have to put anything in there. I am anti-differentiating v of t with respect to t. Now, when I hit enter here and then type in, well, what is x of t? What you'll notice is what the CAS leaves off is that plus c on the end. So I highly recommend that when you're doing this, you just go plus c here. And now you've got that on the end but we're going to have to find out what this C is going to be. And they've given us enough information in the question for us to find it. It says it is initially four meters to the right of a point, initially four meters to the right of a point. So that means when T is equal to zero, it's going to be equal to four. So now I can go menu, algebra, solve, and go, all right, X of zero. So when T is equal to zero, it's going to be equal to four. And I want to solve it for C. And that means C is going to be equal to four. And then if you wanted to, you could just come up here again to this one. And instead of going C plus C, you could just go plus four. And now you've defined your um, position equation as this. So I can come over here now and write that in. So as you can see, it was a bit of a fancy footwork on the CAS there, but I think that is the best way to do it. Plus five T plus four. If you were to do it without your CAS, I mean, it's not too tricky. You would go through the same steps you just, but uh, to do it by hand, I'll just do it roughly down here. You don't have to copy this down. You plus one to the power, you divide by that power. You plus one by the power, you divide by that power. You plus one to the power, which will just make it T, then you plus C. This will become T cubed because this three and three will cancel. This will cancel to four, meaning I'll get minus four T plus five T plus C. This is what X of T is going to be equal to. I will then put in the point zero four to find what C is going to be. So I'm going to end up with four here, and then this will be zero cubed minus four zero plus five zero plus C, which means four, well that dies, that dies, that dies, four is equal to C. So that means I'd come up here and I'd put a four there. So that's how you do it by hand. Not too tricky at all, but I just thought I'd use the CAS because it's a good opportunity to do that. Um, now, we also have to find the acceleration equation. Uh, to do that, what we're going to do is, again, I'll define it. I'll go, what is A of T? I'm going to go, uh, sh oh, not shift, control this to define. Oh, I just confused it. Control this. Uh, then I'm going to go shift minus. 
I'm differentiating with vector t and I'm differentiating v of t. And once I've done all that, I can then say a of t is going to be equal to 6t minus 8. So I can come up here now and I can write that in, 6 of t minus 8. And now I have given the question what it needed. It needed the position equation and the acceleration equation. Next thing's next. We're going to move on to B now, where it says find its position when the velocity is zero. So we're going back to our velocity equation here. I'm going to go take your velocity equation, set it equal to zero, and solve for t. So that means I'm going to come here. I'm going to go menu. I'm going to go algebra. I'm going to go solve. I'm going to go um, v of t is equal to zero for my t values. It's going to be t is equal to 1 and t is equal to 5 on 3. There are two of them. So let me write those in. t is equal to 1 and 5 on 3. It says it wants the position for where these occur. So now I'm going to have to go, well, what is x of 1 and what is x of 5 on 3? So let's do that now. I'll come over here and I'm going to go uh, x of 1 is 6. Do you see how much easier it is? The fact that we've defined things, it makes our lives so much easier. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to go x of 5 on 3. Whoa, 5 on 3 is, whoa, that's, a, that's an ugly number right there. Did I put that incorrectly? Yeah, that's right. All right, 158 over 27. So those are the positions. So 6, so 6 meters to the right of the origin and whatever that ugly value is. Meters, meters. And that is it. That's how you do that question right there. Let me highlight. Highlight, 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 highlight. And we know that these are stationary points as well because that's where my velocity is equal to zero. So this is where they're at rest. Then finally it says, what is the acceleration when the velocity is zero? What's the acceleration when the velocity is zero? Well, to do this, what we're going to do, see, is I'm going to get my acceleration equation, which was a of t and a of t, and I'm going to let t be equal to 6 and 158 on 27. So I'm going to get a of 6, and I will also get a of 158 on 27. And let's see what happens when I sub those things in. Ooh, ooh, I've made a mistake. I have made a mistake. Did you pick up my mistake? These are not the t values. Whoops. I'm not re-recording this video. We're seven minutes in, people. I'm not re-recording it. See what happens when you, your mind just lapses there for a second? These are my positions. This is where they are. This is the location of where they are. You wouldn't chuck in those as your um, into that. You chuck in these. That is the time at which the stationary points occur. So if we want to find what is the acceleration when the velocity is zero, you chuck in the time. Your goose, eight of that, eight of five on three. All right, let's try that again, people. So it's going to be a of 1, which is negative 2. Now, it's negative 2 meters a second squared, because that's the uh, that's how you like to write it. And then the other one will be a on 5 on 3, which will be positive 2. 2 meters a second squared. And those are your answers. And that's how you do it. That's how you approach these questions. Hopefully this has made sense to you. If not, make sure you're reaching out to your teacher. All right, that is all. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully using the CAS doesn't seem so daunting and I will see you in the next one.